What's up, everybody? I'm Stella Chung, and you're watching The Weekly Fix, the show where we get you caught up on all the news you may have missed this week in games and entertainment. Rumors are dropping of PlayStation possibly responding to Game Pass with a brand new service of their own, and we've learned GTA 5 Online is getting new DLC instead of any news on GTA 6. On the entertainment side, new details have emerged from Spider-Man No Way Home's posters and from Kevin Feige himself. So get comfy and let's swing on in. According to a Bloomberg source, Sony is making plans for a new monthly subscription access pass to a library of games currently codenamed Spartacus. This method is the same model used for Xbox's popular Game Pass service, allowing subscribers to play a library of new and old games for a monthly fee. The new service is expected to merge two existing Sony subscription services, PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, with the Now being phased out as a brand due to its inability to catch on as a core subscription service. The PlayStation Plus name will remain the same. According to the document, the upcoming service will offer three tiers. The first includes the same benefits as PlayStation Plus required for online gaming, plus with some free games every month. The next up offers the previous tier plus access to a gaming catalog like Game Pass. And the third tier will include all of the above and extended demos, game streaming, and access to a larger library of games that includes those for PS1, PS2, PS3, and the PSP. It's a smart move on Sony to use a new service to introduce a backwards compatibility component to play older games as it's been a popular request from PlayStation owners. Now, the only question is, will it include only popular older titles or a large variety? I'm still trying to play through Ephemeral Fantasia since physical copies are hard to find. Moving on, Animal Crossing may need to add a rated M for Mature for its title as Animal Crossing's New Horizons latest DLC comes with a glitch that turns villagers, well, naked. Wait, aren't animals naturally naked? Thankfully, the glitch is safe for work nudity with villagers stripped off their clothes to show off their smooth birthday suits underneath. Players reacting in fear and some absolutely baffled at how some of their kitchen workers are just not dressed to code. What's absolutely bewildering players is how this glitch is even happening. On a lighter note, the new 2.0 update includes new castle items which gave players the ability to recreate landscapes from the beautiful world of Breath of the Wild. Thanks to a report from Polygon, we got to see recreations from the Lost Woods resembling the uncanny fear induced by the fog and eerie looks found while traversing on Link's adventures. Ever wanted to make Hyrule Castle your own? Well, follow this villager's recreation of it. Just don't become hell-bent on power like Ganondorf. And just like the Lost Wood recreation, Naden Far beautifully recreates Kakariko Village, apples and all. It's absolutely ingenious and stunning to see fans take the new patch eagerly creating recreations of other Legend of Zelda landscapes. Now, if only someone recreated Breath of the Wild Zora Domain, I may drop some bells for that. We got confirmation today from Rockstar that Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg were not working on GTA 6, but rather a new story-focused DLC coming to GTA 5 online called The Contract. It features GTA 5 character Franklin sent years after the single-player campaign who works for a celebrity solutions agency. Franklin's potential client in the scenario is legendary Dr. Dre, who, surprise, surprise, lost his phone full of unreleased new music. Seems very reminiscent of when CJ had to steal Mad Dog's rhyme book in GTA San Andreas, huh? At least this time, it's a good deed. This new expansion comes with a lot as well. In addition to working with Franklin, who manages F. Clinton and partner, players will work with Chop the Dog and a hacker named Imani while exploring new neighborhoods, Los Santos parties, and FIB offices while jamming to a list of new tracks, a new radio station, some other special guests, new weapons, vehicles, hit contracts, and a lot more uh, we just don't know yet. Now, I know we're all happy for this new DLC for GTA Online, but the truth is Rockstar has said they didn't feel a story-driven DLC was necessary or possible for GTA 5. Rockstar has prioritized its online component, GTA Online, releasing DLC packs because, well, it makes good money. So why release a story-driven DLC for GTA 5 Online for free after years of fan requests being ignored? Rockstar specifically stated GTA 5 was simply too broad and taxing a project for it to receive one, I can only fathom that GTA The Trilogy Definitive Edition was such a failure they had no choice but to release something for free for GTA 5 online to appease fans. Though I do hope this isn't a staple we see in the future where Rockstar releases a complete game and then no single player DLC. Also, I would prefer some news on GTA 6. 
I'm just saying. Who's with me? Moving on, Halo Infinite's open world was reportedly cut down from a scale similar to the world of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. According to a report on the game's development by Bloomberg, two-thirds of the planned game was chosen to be cut drastically, slashing the game's open world map back in 2019. 343 Industries made this decision in order to stabilize the direction the game was heading after Halo Infinite hit a number of issues. Despite making efforts to streamline production, Infinite's problems continued past 2019 when developers showed a range of gameplay footage that was met with an overwhelming disapproval from the Halo community as fans mocked the gameplay footage as poor quality. Considering that Craig the Brute has gotten a glow up since then, it feels like the dark days are now behind us as Halo Infinite has been met with praise from both its single player and multiplayer mode. Now, if you want to pre-install Halo Infinite, like I mentioned yesterday, it looked like you couldn't. In a tweet from Halo's support account, 343 Industries revealed fans won't be able to preload Halo Infinite's campaign ahead of its release, which should have happened by the time you're watching this, considering downloads unlocked globally at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The studio did mention that players who had already downloaded the game's multiplayer beta will have their overall download time for the game significantly reduced, but players will still need to fully download the game before jumping into the campaign. Take a deep breath before we jump into the story because there is a catch to the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection set to be released on PlayStation 5 in January with a PC port for Steam and Epic Games at a later date. The collection will cost $50 digitally and physically and includes Uncharted 4, A Thieves End, and Uncharted Lost Legacy. Now here's the catch. For players who purchase Uncharted 4, A Thieves End, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, or the digital bundle with both games have the option to pay $10 to upgrade to the Legacy of Thieves digital version. Caveats for this collection are that this release only features the single player campaigns of both games and not the PlayStation 4 multiplayer mode. Players who own physical copies of the PlayStation 4 version have to insert them into the PlayStation 5 every time they want to play the PlayStation 5 digital version. However, the PlayStation 4 disc owners who have the PlayStation 5 digital edition, which does not come with the disc drive, are not eligible to get the PlayStation 5 version at the discounted price. Also, players who claimed Uncharted 4, A Thieves, and via the PlayStation Plus subscription are also not eligible for the $10 digital upgrade. Man, that's one heck of a tightrope. The bright side is there's a promotional tie-in for the upcoming Uncharted the Movie starring Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. From now till February 3rd, 2022, players who purchase or upgrade to Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection via the PlayStation Store receive a voucher code for a ticket to see the movie when it releases February 18th, 2022. Sadly, this offer is only available to residents in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and the US. Again, I'm sorry. I'm just the messenger, don't kill me. So why bother upgrading to this new collection at all? Uncharted Legacy of Thieves will have updated graphic fidelity for those who want to play the game on a 4K display with 30 frames per second. Players who have a compatible 120Hz display will be able to play in Performance Plus mode, which targets 120 frames per second at 1080p. For PlayStation 5 users, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection will also utilize the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, spatial 3D audio, and adapt the triggers with low times almost near instant. Currently, standalone versions of the Uncharted 4, A Thieves, and, and Uncharted Lost Legacy have been removed from sale on the PlayStation Store ahead of the January release of the collection. Hopefully, this puzzle is a little easier to solve than the ones found in Uncharted. Moving on, it seems the upcoming Halo Infinite release tomorrow is breaking its long-standing series tradition by not allowing players to replay story missions. Yeah, you heard that right. And the only way to access them again is through a different save file. According to a statement issued by Microsoft to Polygon, the company confirmed the story campaign missions in the game can't be replayed once complete. This is absolutely mind-boggling, as traditionally in previous Halo games, players were allowed to replay missions through a dedicated menu system. Microsoft clarified that post-game, you're given the option to keep exploring, but regarding missions like the first two when players are not on the ring yet, those missions cannot be replayed. Players can still obtain fobs, targets, and audio logs, but the story missions themselves will not be repeatable. Per Polygon, one of the main reasons for story missions not being replayable comes from the game's semi-open world structure. Mission progression is linear but requires completion of different regions of the world to progress. Once completed, players can head back to regions to explore but not to repeat completed missions. 
December is a loaded month of amazing games for Xbox Game Pass subscribers, and if you are still on the fence, maybe this list will change your mind. The biggest game on the list is Halo Infinite, launching day one on Xbox Game Pass on December 8th. Xbox Game Pass members can pre-install Halo Infinite via the Xbox Game Pass app on mobile PC and then choose the console to install. It might be a good idea since Halo Infinite's install size on Xbox Series X is 74.3 gigabytes and on PC clocks up to 100 gigabytes. On December 2nd, a batch of games will roll out onto Xbox Game Pass, which include Anvil Game Preview, Arc Veil, Final Fantasy 13 2, Lawn Mowing Simulator, Rubber Bandits, Stardew Valley, Town Scraper, and Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. For the remainder of the month, Xbox Game Pass still has some more games being released. Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator on December 7th, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 on December 9th, Aliens Fireteam Elite and Among Us on December 14th, and finally, The Gunk on December 16th. Currently, Microsoft is offering three months of Xbox Game Pass for PC for only $1 for both first-time and past subscribers, which is a pretty good deal if I do say so myself. In addition, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate users can gain access to monthly bonuses in Halo Infinite just for being signed up. Game Pass Ultimate users will be able to get an exclusive past tense MA40 assault rifle coding, which releases on December 8th. Now, even though there are some great games coming in December, November has some good games worthy of checking out before time runs out. Games leaving Game Pass are Destiny 2, Beyond Light, Beholder, The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan, Guacamelee, Wilmont's Warehouse, Unto the End, and Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. So yeah, great time to jump in on the Game Pass. Don't miss it. Moving on, following news over the weekend of Activision Blizzard laying off at least a dozen quality assurance contractors at Raven Studios, members of the team with the company have planned to stage a walkout and demand employees laid off return and be offered full-time positions. The QA team of Raven Software, who work on ensuring quality of Call of Duty Warzone, released a statement announcing their reason and intent to walk out. It should be noted that Call of Duty Warzone is one of Activision Blizzard's biggest hits considering its financial success. Success. The Raven QA team made statements that the individuals laid off were terminated in good standing, meaning they had not underperformed nor committed any offense with reason of termination. The layouts have also reduced the QA team that work on Call of Duty Warzone by over 30%, meaning that members laid off are considered essential to the everyday function of the Raven QA team. The employee group advocating for all Activision Blizzard employees, a better ABK, says that the termination of high-performing testers while workload and profits are soaring is an unacceptable action by the company and contradicts Raven's goal of being an exemplary workplace in our industry. It's not looking so good for Activision Blizzard, as a recent update from shareholders ordering for the resignation of CEO Bobby Kotek after it was brought to light that Kotek did in fact know about hostile workplace culture and tried to cover it up. Ooh, here's looking towards a better, brighter future for Activision Blizzard. It's time to take a quick break, but when we come back, we've got more details on Spider-Man No Way Home prior to its release and an update on the Sonic 2 movie's voice cast. Be right back. Welcome back. The sequel to 2020 Sonic movie, aptly titled Sonic 2, has confirmed Tails' voice actor and Eggman's look for the film. But before we get to that, villains are taking center stage in new promotional material for Spider-Man No Way Home. Check it out. All right, well, it looks like we got a look at the returning villains in Spider-Man No Way Home. And while the villains take center stage on each poster, there's a certain webhead or web heads taking attention away from the treacherous trio. Featuring Doc Ock, Electro, and Green Goblin, the three posters each focus on the villains with a certain friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the forefront. While the Spider-Man on each poster might be blurred out, the costumes of the Spider-Man look slightly different on each. Now, the one on the Doc Ock poster matches up with Tom Holland's current Spidey costume, while the costumes on the Electro and Green Goblin posters look like different suits, possibly one of Tom Holland's alternate costumes, or perhaps maybe their altered versions of Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield's signature red and blue suits. And the facial outlines of each Spider-Man on display in each poster look different, causing us to speculate that there will in fact be more than one Spider-Man in No Way Home. Now at this point, you know, between the, the leaked photos, the Brazilian edited trailer gap, and now these posters, it's as if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's involvement in No Way Home has been all but confirmed by Sony and Marvel. 
Well, it seems like, you know, they'd rather just drop subtle hints and clues for the internet and outlets like us here at IGN to keep speculating and keep the buzz going for the film well on up to the December 17th release date. And I don't mind. Personally, I really, really don't mind because, you know, I love Spider-Man and I honestly can't wait to see this movie. Hands down, probably the most anticipated superhero flick of the year. Drop a like if you agree. Now, we should also point out that in the Electro poster, he has one of Tony Stark's arc reactors, which may have been given to him by Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Now, as we know from the second trailer, Doctor Strange informs Peter that the fate of each of these villains is death by the hands of their respective Spider-Man in their universe. Now, Peter later laments how he can't save everyone, suggesting that Holland's Peter Parker might sympathize with the plight of the villains and aid them in some way, in the case of Electro, giving him access to the arc reactor. Now, based on the trailer, we already know it won't be easy to get that back from him. You're not gonna take this away from me. Whew, so much to look forward to with this one. And we don't have to wait too much longer. No, December 17th is just days away. And with No Way Home being just days away, people can't stop thinking about Spider-Man. Even the OG MJ, Kirsten Dunst, is thinking about the old web slinger in a recent interview she did with Entertainment Weekly. Now, the actress expressed her desire to reprise her role in a new Spider-Man movie saying, quote, I wish they'd put me in another one. Like old girl Mary Jane, why not? I would do another superhero movie, everybody else is. She is right, everyone else is. You know, you're, you're bringing back Defoe, Melina. How about we get some done stuff in cheer, huh? I'm sure she can teach Zendaya's MJ a thing or two about Peter Parker. Yeah, of course she can. With No Way Home set to release in just a couple of weeks, big boss man over at Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige is revealing why he chose certain Spider-Man villains to make a comeback in the Web Slinger's latest outing. Now speaking exclusively with Screen Rant, Feige explains what motivated both Marvel Studios and Sony to go in the direction they chose for No Way Home. Now, he he explains how the deal between Disney and Sony has made almost anything possible, kicking off with the reveal of Peter Parker's identity in Far From Home, which ultimately, quote, set us on a course for things we've never seen before in a Spider-Man movie. That's the fun of making movies, is to do things people haven't seen before, and in the MCU, there are ways that lots of amazing things can happen, and that Doctor Strange would be a good conduit to that. Strange, don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. Fine, I won't. Now, Doctor Strange is indeed the conduit for this very thing happening as the spell he cast in No Way Home is the reason behind the various doors to other universes were cracked open. He's the reason why those doors were open. They allowed the villainous visitors from other dimensions to slip on through. Now, as Kevin Feige stated, this isn't something we've seen done in the MCU and it's something rather unique to the Spider-Man series of movies given his character existing outside of the MCU before Tom Holland and stepped into the role. Now these old, some might even say fan favorite villains are making a very impactful return in No Way Home because of this unique relationship between Disney and Sony regarding the Spider-Man IP and fans are here to see how it all unfolds when No Way Home hits theaters December 17th. Now while we're talking about, you know, the multiverse, we might as well touch upon the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Now, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse released its first teaser over the weekend revealing its release date and that it'll be part one of a larger story. Now in the trailer, we see a slightly older Miles chilling in his room when Gwen Stacy appears. Now we also see glimpses of Miles traversing through various universes along with a clash with Spider-Man 2099. Now Spidey of the year 2099 is voiced by Oscar Isaac and was teased at the end of the first film. But isn't he supposed to be a good guy? You know, why are they fighting? Why is he fighting Miles? This is weird, man, but we'll find out, I guess. Speaking with EW, writer-producers Philip Lord and Christopher Miller stated that fans can expect Miles to run into some of the previous Spidey crew from the first film, as well as many other, quote, spider people. That's how they put it. And when asked if Miles will appear in No Way Home, Lord and Miller said, quote, we've seen No Way Home, so we would be very surprised if Miles showed up, but everyone is part of the Spider-Verse. So you mean to tell me they've seen No Way Home already? Damn, man, I, I guess that's one of the perks that come along with writing and producing a Marvel movie. Lucky dogs, man, I tell you, lucky dogs. Now, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 releases in theaters October 7th, 2022.
Sonic the Hedgehog is headed our way with a sequel to the 2020 film with Sonic 2, and Paramount Pictures recently dropped a special treat for fans, along with showing us this awesome poster featuring the likes of Sonic, Tails, and a more game-accurate Dr. Robotnik, it was also revealed that the first trailer for the film will be debuting at the Game Awards. Now what's cool about the movie poster is its subtle nod to the original box art for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that came out on the Sega Genesis, with the placement of the two heroes, Sonic and Tails, in the front and Eggman off in the upper right-hand side. It's a super subtle thing that I'm pretty sure a lot of fans might have noticed. Also, a few days ago, it was announced that Colleen O'Shaughnessy will be reprising her role as the voice of Tails in Sonic 2. Now, you might remember hearing her voice on both the Sonic Boom TV series and video games. Since what you're saying doesn't need to be translated, UT is translating it into what you really mean. I didn't intend for it to do that, but I will gladly accept full credit. Now, she took to Twitter and said, quote, taking my old pal Tails for another adventure. Thrilled to announce I'm the voice of Miles Tails Prower in hashtag Sonic Movie 2. Can't wait for y'all to see him on the big screen. Now that's freaking awesome, and I gotta say that's kinda unprecedented for these big movie studios to have the video game voice actors reprise their role for the big screen. You know, they usually go for, you know, a big name celebrity banking on their popularity to draw in an audience and, you know, put butts in those seats. I mean, just look at, you know, the upcoming Mario movie where they did my man Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, for years, they did him very dirty by reportedly only having him voice various minor characters in the film while Chris Pratt steps into the role of Mario. I mean, Martinet, he was the voice of, he was the Mario, the voice of Mario since the 90s, only to be eclipsed by, but Star-Lord? Come on, man, damn, Nintendo, y'all, y'all, Y'all need to learn something. Y'all can learn something, a thing or two from Paramount and Sega. I guess it's true, you know, what they said way back when. It's free. What Nintendo Now, it's crazy that that was an actual commercial that existed way back when. Can you believe it? Man, the 90s were it's nuts. Anyways, great fan service from Paramount Pictures on this one. Look for Sonic 2, the movie, in theaters April 8th, 2022. Now, in other news, Dwayne The Rock Johnson wants to take the fight to Superman, even though he has absolutely no clue who the Man of Steel might be in a future movie. But you know what? Now that he is in the DCEU with the upcoming Black Adam movie, I guess it's more of a possibility for him to take on Superman. Now, in an interview with Total Film, The Rock said, quote, there's a battle that's going to go down one day between Black Adam and Superman. I don't know who that Superman is going to be, and I don't know who's going to play him. That's okay. I don't need to know right now, but I'm confident in knowing that. And that's based out of what fans want. We worked backwards from there. Well, Henry Cavill did say earlier this this week while on promotional tour for The Witcher season two, that he still has the cape in his closet and that he's just waiting for the phone call to rise up yet again as Superman. Cavill versus Johnson. I mean, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I would definitely pay to see that match in a movie or I don't know, the next Royal Rumble. I don't know, we need to get Vince McMahon on this stack. little snack, and here we go. Sonic, I love that you want to help make a difference. Mind if I drive? Ah! You're being reckless. Don't worry, nobody's gonna get hurt. Pretending to be Batman. Blue Justice, trademark pending. You're still just a kid. Trust me, there will come a moment when your powers will be needed. But you don't choose that moment. That moment chooses you. I just got goosebumps. Wait a second, did you steal that from Oprah? He's back! Papa's got a brand new stash. Ha! Since I've been gone, I've discovered the source of ultimate power. That sounds big. It's been on my vision board for years. Hope I'm not too late. I'm sorry, who are you? Name's Tails. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Step one, light taunting. Step two, I have no idea. Hang on! Whoa! That wasn't too bad. <laughs> Today's for 
forecast calls for a 100% chance of adventure. On it! Return to sender. Face it, you're never going to get my power. Do I look like I need your power? Where are my manners? Sonic, meet Knuckles. I'm Stella Chung, and that was your Weekly Fix. We'll be back here next Saturday with more of the biggest gaming and entertainment news of the week. See you then.